Ronnie, if I may call you Ronnie. <laughs> it is an honor to share the stage with you, uh, and it's an honor uh, to speak on the behalf of the Israeli Z generation. Thank you for your inspiring remarks. You presented an interesting and inspiring vision, uh, and I may speak for us all who are eager to join the, uh, the impact revolution. Uh, so, so we both have a few questions for you, uh, and I would like to ask you, uh, although tremendous effort is being invested in communicating uh, to the consumers the corporate responsibilities uh, and impact on the society and the environment, there is actually a decrease in the trust amongst consumers vis-a-vis -vis, uh, big corporations. How do you see uh, the connections between the consumers and big companies, and how can they restore that trust? Excellent, excellent question. The third force, there was a change in values and the leaps in technology, answers your question. It's the force of transparency and the measurement of impact. The SEC, which is responsible for all financial regulation in the United States, has announced that it would like to introduce the measurement of all environmental impacts created by companies, including their supply chains, and have them published regularly alongside financial information. The organization responsible for regulating or standardizing financial accounting across the world has already established an international sustainability standards board to standardize the measurement of impacts. And it includes social as well as environmental impacts. So the answer is we have to bring similar transparency to impacts for companies that we brought to profits 90 years ago when every company could pick its own accounting principles and there were no auditors to verify the numbers. We have to get to a place now where we can analyze in monetary terms and compare with sales and profits the impacts of companies, social and environmental. In my view, it's going to happen within three to five years. This is on your doorstep. Why? Because the work we've been doing at Harvard shows that the companies which are polluting more are worth less than their competitors. And if that's the case, then what do regulators have to do? They have to make sure that this stock price sensitive data reaches every investor at the same time on a comparable verified basis in order to maintain orderly markets. So it's on our doorstep. We should all be demanding it. Israel should be leading in it. Somebody was saying to me that they would like to bring to Israel the work on impact-weighted accounting, which Harvard has been doing, that they would like it to be carried out at the IDC. Let's do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ronald. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, aggressive. Um, I'm going to use my best Israeli quality, uh, which is a uh, chutzpah. Uh, according to Google, your net worth is 220 million pounds. So, uh, of course, from your impressive parkour uh, as a, the first venture capitalist in the UK. So, my first question, if I may, is how are you impacting the global economy with your private capital? And secondly, what would you say to those who accuse the impact movement as a privileged people movement, as a privileged, yeah. So what am I doing? Well, I left Apex at the age of 60 to devote the next 20 years or more of my life, depending on how many God gives me, to work on social issues and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. All my investments 
are impact focused. Every venture that I have backed in, in Israel and through Dynamic Loop Capital, we've backed two dozen ventures, including the first woman to lead a unicorn, Einat Gez of Papaya Global, including companies like uh, Optibus, which are in the software area managing public transport, but not just measuring growth and profit, measuring reduction in carbon emissions, waiting time for vulnerable commuters, reducing the number of hours that uh, drivers work, reducing the number of accidents. And so I don't believe in investing in fossil fuels. Not just because of the harm it does, but this is the message for everyone here and outside this hall, because actually it's a bad way to invest. You can give the fossil fuel industry 10 to 20 years before it's completely overtaken by clean energy. So invest in clean energy. So any entrepreneurs here with exciting ventures that are designed to change the world, find Tal or Johnny. Thank you. Thank you, this is just fascinating. Uh, so as a representative of the Israeli Gen Z, uh, I would like to know uh, what in your opinion is our, the Israeli Gen Z, uh, the Israeli youth, uh, role in reshaping the economy into an impact economy? Entrepreneurs are leading, young entrepreneurs are leading this revolution. Like the young entrepreneurs who led the tech revolution. The elders thought it was a load of rubbish. How could a young entrepreneur, a dropout from university, overtake a company like IBM? You must be out of your mind. And what do we find? 30 years later, the leading companies of the world were created within the last 30 years. The same is going to be happening again. You can show real leadership, and your leadership will inspire our political leaders to understand impact, because if impact has been adopted by entrepreneurs and investors, governments and philanthropists haven't really started to adopt it. Thank you. So, following Yael's important question, I would like to ask, is it possible for a young individual, let's call him non philos uh, to do well, like really well, like uh, sell Ronnie Cohen uh, well, by doing good? Totally. <laughs> doing good and doing well is the formula for success in the future. If you want to attract the best talent, you won't attract them by offering them more options, more money, and polluting the atmosphere and employing child labor. Those days are over. You want to attract the best business talent in young people, you give them a goal that's bigger than themselves. You give them a role that enables them to fulfill their sense of mission to bring an answer to the question of what the meaning of your lives are at your age. At my age, I can look back and try to ascribe meaning to my life. But at your stage in life, you have to find meaning. And that's what being an impact entrepreneur does. So if you want to attract talent, if you want to attract consumers, if you want to attract investors, Bring impact to the core of your business model. So that the more impact you deliver, the more money you make. So many people in my generation thought that the right model was to make as much money as you can as you worked in your professional life. And then after you've been successful, to give that money away. It's no longer the case. In today's world, 
If you have the intention to be successful, you have the biggest opportunity to make the most money by doing good and doing well at the same time. Thank you again for your insights and uh, wisdom. Uh, your vision and our action will pave the, world, the road to develop an impact economy in Israel. Thank you, Yael. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Noah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.